Previet. We've discussed timing diagram waveforms in this course, and so far have assumed that they behave ideally. For example, look at this waveform up top. It jumps from logic 0 to 1 instantaneously, indicated by these vertical lines. It also locks in on a fixed value and never wavers, which might make you think that the voltage values are held steady. Neither of those takeaways from a square waveform are correct. A true waveform would look more like this positive pulse down here, with non-instantaneous changes and wiggly lines. Let's zoom in on this diagram to define a couple terms. First, note that the height of this blue line is a measurement of voltage. For our chips, the baseline is at 0 volts, and the amplitude is 5 volts. So, the 10% mark would represent 0 0.5 volts, and the 90% mark 4.5 volts. With any value changes, there is a brief period of ringing or fluctuations around the stable voltage before the voltage steadies out. But there still would be minor fluctuations even past this point. As discussed last video, these voltage values are translated into logic values through some rather broad ranges. So this positive pulse would be read as logic one beginning much earlier than when it reaches 5 volts. The width of a positive pulse, the type pictured here, is defined as the amount of time that the waveform is high, measured from the 50% point of the rising limb to the 50% point on the falling limb. Rise time is the amount of time needed for a pulse to jump from low to high. This is measured from the 10% to the 90% point on the rising limb. We do not use 0% and 100% because a buffer zone is needed to account for ringing. The definition for fall time is similar, but now for dropping from high to low. Again, the 90% and the 10% points are used. This rise time and fall time are the switching characteristics or propagation delays discussed last video. It takes a certain amount of time, dependent on a number of conditions, for a logic gate to change values. This is on the order of 10 nanoseconds for two input gates. This sort of realistic waveform is what you would observe with an oscilloscope, but you won't see drawings like this in textbooks or simulations. By and large, you will see square waveforms. Even though these are an idealization, they still can be used to illustrate gate delay. For example, here we have a NOT gate with input A and output Y. At first, A equals 0, and so Y equals 1. Then, A changes to 1. Sometime later, Y drops down to 0. This gap in between those changes is the gate delay. We can see a similar delay in the next change. Another type of waveform you might encounter is the diagonal waveform. This is still an idealization, but less so than a square waveform. Rather than instantaneous jumps or drops, the slope allows us to depict the rise time or fall time. Note how these two diagrams are aligned. The square jump in A occurs during the diagonal rise time. This makes sense, because A will read as logic 1, at some point before it reaches its maximum voltage. The connection between the Y waveforms is similar. There is always a distinction between model and reality. These models, whether square or diagonal waveforms, can represent some key features of the true behavior, and maybe those are the only features we care about. But they will never be complete representations. The next time you see a square waveform, Keep in mind that it is a simplification.